we want to graph two cycles of y equals cosine of 2x and determine the period. Well, we can determine the period right off the bat based on our base function. So what is the base function? Well, the base function is just the cosine of x. And if I have the cosine of x, I know that my cycle is 0 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2 pi. Okay, so what do I have that's different? Well, now I have y equals the cosine of 2x. So everywhere there's an x over here, I'm going to plug in 2x. So now what do I have to do? Well, you always want to get x by itself, right? So I need to divide everything through by 2. And I get 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to just pi. So what that tells me is that my cycle is going to be from 0 to pi. But this says I need to do two cycles. And if I need to do two cycles, then it's going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So that's the easy part I like to think of, because you can do all of that based on your base function. So make sure you've memorized your base function. Now, what about, so what is the 2 in front of this x inside of your cosine telling you? Well, remember, that's telling you that you have a shrink. It's going to shrink down your graph. And how can you prove that? Well, let's kind of get an idea of what we think it's going to look like. We know that the cosine looks like this. And what I'm saying is if it shrinks it, then it's actually going to be smaller, right? So if we have that, is that a good estimate? Well, the only way that you're going to know for sure is if you actually pick points to plot. So we have to do a t-table. So we have our x value and we have our y value. And remember, you can check this on your graphing calculator, or if you're taking a class from me, you can use the calculator online that we use. I'm going to use 0, uh, pi over 4, pi over 2, well, 3 pi over 4, and then maybe pi. Now that only gets me one cycle, right? So we're actually going to have to double that for two cycles. So if I plug these in, you should get 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 1. So what does that do for us? Well, now we can actually graph it so that it's done correctly. So at 0, we're still going to be up here at 1. At pi over 4, I'm going to be at 0. At pi over 2, I'm going to be at negative 1. And then at 3 pi over 4, I'm coming back to 0. And then at pi, I'll be back up here at 1. So here's what one cycle looks like. So if that's one cycle, then remember you're just going to have to do another cycle. And there's what your two cycles look like. Remember, it's not exact, and it's not as pretty as what yours should look like.